Yes, Seek and find. It's the glory of God 
Jackie, you want to open this up in a word of prayer? It's time yes, to go. Okay. Shop online. The rooms to go.com. You turn this off. Dear Jesus, thank you for allowing us to be here today to hear your word and open our minds and our hearts for your word, Lord, and lead, and lead us and guide us and direct us in your will. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Well, this is Amen. what God has laid in my heart for today. What do you do when the enemy comes in like a flood? Well, when the enemy comes in like a flood, you can be rest assured it is not because you are doing something wrong, but it is because you are doing something right. So let me encourage you in your spiritual walk and share with you some of the things I've learned about how the enemy attacks you and how you can overcome them. We're looking at the verse found in Isaiah 59, verse 19. So shall they fear They fear the name of the Lord from the rest, west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Amen. Amen. And this we can see that when people start doing the right thing, being in awe and reverence of God, then this is when the promise comes into effect. The enemy does not need to come in like a flood when people are not honoring and serving God. They are already accomplishing his purposes. It is only when people are becoming dangerous to the enemy of our souls that he needs to try to fight what is going on. Amen? Yeah. Now understand the spiritual nature of the attack. First and foremost, you need to understand 
that when you come under attack, that it is spiritual and source in nature. Many times that we are tempted to look at the circumstances or people and view them as the enemy. They may be tools of the enemy, but the enemy is spiritual, not physical. Your enemy is not people, not finances or obstacles of any kind. The cause is a spiritual agenda that wants to stop you from doing the things you are doing that is infringing on the kingdom of darkness. Use spiritual weapons against the attacks. Next, you need to understand that the weapons of our warfare are not physical, but spiritual. In 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4, if you are going to fight a spiritual battle, you have to use the weapons that work in that realm. Let's see what 2 Corinthians says. Chapter 10, verse 4. 2 Corinthians. <coughs> Praise God. Good word for today. I told him I could hear that TV in the background. Second Corinthians, what? Chapter 10, verse 4. You want to read it, Jackie? Can you give me one second, please? Yeah, I'm, I'm still sure trying to figure it out myself. I, yeah, I have a new Bible, and it's hard to flip the pages when they're new. My, I use mm -hmm. my mama's Bible, and okay. some of the pages are uh, folded on me. <laughs> so sometimes me trying to get to the books, I have trouble. So bear with me a second. You're but fine. I, should, I don't mind at all. Okay. All right. Second Corinthians ten. Verse four. Okay. What chapter you guys? Chapter ten. ten. Chapter ten. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I, I got it. All right. For the weapons of our welfare are not carnal and mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So these weapons that we need to be using are prayer, fasting, and the word of God. When you are in a spiritual battle, you need to increase your prayer time. Skip some meals and get into the Word of God for both direction and the building of your faith. Don't try to win this battle with human reasoning and methods. Let the Lord win, the, win this battle for you. Let His Holy Spirit lift up the battle standard against Him. A standard was an old English word that was used in a battle when a standard or a flag was raised. It was the signal for all the troops to rally at that point. The Hebrew word NW, wait a minute, N -U -W -C means to ply, to the attack on horseback. So let the Holy Spirit be the one that lifts up the standard that repels the enemy. Amen. Do not give up before the battle is over. One of the greatest temptations and mistakes that people face has been when they give up when things are getting hot. We've learned that many times the battle rages the fiercest when the victory is almost won. You need to understand that the enemy of our souls has an intense hatred for any, anyone that will follow Jesus wholeheartedly. He will not just lay over like a beat dog and expose his neck at the first final sign of battle. He goes around like a roaring lion, not a whip puppy. And you can look that up in 1 Peter 5, verse 8. If you like. Alice, that for me. Because he is looking to devour you. First Peter 5, verse 8. Let's see what. Okay, I'm fine. 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 I
And you said five eight. Yes. Okay. All right, and today I'm reading for the from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So it may, you know, the wording may be a little different, but it all means the same. If you all follow along okay. in your Bibles, you'll get it. So okay. five, eight, let me get there. Okay, it says, be serious, be alert. Are you are you with us? Um, did you get it in yours? You got to the yes. verse? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Be serious, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for anyone he can devour. Amen. So when things get hot, when they get tough, when they get scared, don't give up. Your Redeemer draws near. And that's in Luke 21, verse 28. You want to take that one, Jackie? Yeah. Okay. Cap what was the chapter? Luke, Luke twenty one. Luke twenty. Twenty one. Twenty eight. Yes. Twenty eight. Yeah. Twenty eight. Luke twenty one verse twenty eight. Twenty one, twenty eight. I'm sorry, y'all. It's all right. So, you're okay. Okay. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for you are redemption draweth nigh. Amen. So understand that the battle may cost you. Most of us have a concept of elusive victory, as in warfare in the physical realm, war costs lives and resources. So, too, in the spiritual realm, it may cost you. That is the price of taking up your cross and following Jesus. The Apostle Paul is an example, excuse me, excellent example of how spiritual warfare cost him. He was beaten, stoned, imprisoned, left for dead, famished, and etc. All of those things were the cost of the war that the enemy brought against him. But he learned a crucial lesson in all of and then he recorded for us in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7 and 10. And I will read that because it's got it wrote right here for me. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in their flesh and the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure concerning this thing. I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, if my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness, therefore most gladly I will rather boast in any infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take, I take pleasure in, in infirmities and in reproaches and needs and pers persecutions and darkness for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And that's all of that. That's just a, just a short devotion about the spiritual warfare. Uh-huh. Hey, Amen. That was good. Amen. So if you have anything to add to it, feel free. But we some days we will have long Bible studies. Sometimes we'll have short. But that was just, that was just uh, drops in my spirit while we were talking about the kids, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. The enemy does come in like a flood, and he has come in like a flood on these children. Absolutely. Yeah, well, we know he's going to attack our children first. I mean, through many ways, not just through illness, but I mean, because he's trying to foster disbelief with the adults, with the with the parents, just like these young parents that yeah. just had to bury their baby today. I mean, yeah. you know. Uh, it's it's so it's scary, but it's very likely that they are going to be distanced from God at least for a little while. When yes. really, um, you know, they they need to be so much stronger in the Lord and reach for the Lord. Yes. But I'm just afraid for these two that they're not going to. So we really need to keep them in prayer. Yes. Yeah. 
try to keep reaching out to them and encouraging them and talk. Yeah. And I'm pr thanking God that they do still keep coming on my, Mike's live stream from time to time. I praise God for that because they need encouraging. They need to keep associated with Christian friends. And yeah, family. And it hurts. That hurts praise to lose your baby. That. There's probably no pain yeah. um, equal to that. I mean, to what these guys are going through. So. Yeah, that's, that's true. Because it was so hard when I met my my husband, and he didn't want no kids because he lost his first two kids. Mm -hmm. It took a while for him to. He still, he, even though they died in 1977, he still grieves over those kids. But yeah. not as bad as you. But, you know, but he's thankful that we did have two other kids. Praise God that he had two, two a boy and a girl. But. It doesn't take their place, I'm sure. My grandparents yeah. lost my dad in 2011, and I watch them every day, and they it's still hard on them. And he, he um, was grown. Right. Saying, it's still hard on them, though. Oh, yeah, I imagine you don't, so. That's something you don't get over, that's for sure. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. Don't. It doesn't matter how old how old your children mm -hmm. are. Your children. Yes. That's true. I mean, even though they, we give them back to the Lord, they're still our yes. babies. Oh yes. They will be our babies. The good Lord lets us take care of them here on earth, you know, and wants us to teach them and show them right and everything, and give them back to Him, you know. Well, you know, the hard, another hard thing with that, um, with the young parents, with, gosh, what was the date with Braden? I mean, you know, he was born premature anyway. He oh, was born yes. five weeks. He didn't even weigh two pounds when he was born. Oh. And, yeah, and they came through that trial, and, um, you know, he, he's been out of the hospital, of course, you know, and just thriving and doing well. Oh. And then to be hit like this. Oh, that just really, um, oh my gosh, I just can't imagine how they feel. Because when they came through that from his premature birth and he came home well and has done well. And I mean, that is one love baby, I tell you. Oh, yeah. Yes. And videos. I mean, those oh, parents yes. love that baby. Oh, yes. It's to happen, yes. that really has knocked them back a lot. So, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. I didn't realize he was premature, but mm. I, I can relate to that. Uh, my son was born at 32 weeks, mm. and he weighed four pounds. Oh, wow. And, yeah, so I can relate to that situation a little bit, which, mm. thank God, he's, he's 17 now, and he's done well and everything. So right. I, I thank the good God above for Allowing that. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Praise God for that. Yes, because so, yeah. so many premature babies end up with, you know, with lifelong disabilities of some sort or another. Yes. Yes. Oh, hearing, yes. vision, et cetera. But, and Brayden didn't appear to have any disabilities either. No. You know. No, he didn't. he didn't. And it was just a shot that he just got so sick so quickly. I mean, yes. So. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, um, yeah. We'll close in prayer. Uh, Alice, would you close us in prayer? Sure. Okay, y'all ready? Thanks. Father God, we just thank you for allowing us to, to gather, to all come together. God, we, we, we praise you for giving us the technology and the ability to get on here together, God, and be able to read your word together. Uh, we, we ask, Father, just to, we lift to you, God, these young parents. We lift to you, God, the parents that we are not, that we're not familiar with, God. We lift these people up, it, God, out here in the world that's just being tried, God, that's going through their trials. Father, just help yes. keep them strong. Put them with with Christians, God, that are strong, strong in the Lord, Father. Let them be drawn to church, to other Christians and in, in groups. God, just 
just put them with someone that can help strengthen them and, and hold them up, Father, until the time comes that they can again stand on their own two feet. God, we praise you and we love you and we thank you, God, for all the blessings we have in our lives. The tiny, tiny things that we just don't even realize, Father, that we do have all the way up to the huge miracles. And we thank you, Father, for giving us the abilities, Father, to read, to hear, to see. And God, we just want to thank you and we just want to bring glory to your name. Please, God, let us be obedient to your word, Father. Let us do the best that we, we can, God. None of us are perfect in that phone would stop. My gracious, I'm so sorry, y'all. I have no idea what's coming through on the other phone. And we just want to want to ask you, God, to let us be, be obedient to your word, to take your word to others, to be kind to others, Father, to be considerate. And in the times that we have difficulty being kind and considerate, just help us to just keep our mouths shut. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I, I figured you might need to go ahead and check out. Did you ever find uh, help with that lady last night? No, no. I need to get back um, into checking on a couple of things. That's why I had my camera and all off just a little bit ago because um, I was still busy trying to get some things done. But um, no, and her brother, you know, bro Brother Jimmy is her brother. And yeah. oh, so I'm just kind of frustrated. Yeah. He couldn't reach her. I couldn't reach her. And I, I'm certain it's because her phone is dying. You know, she has nowhere to charge her phone. But if I could just get a street location, then we could send Mike. And, um, you know, we could handle things. But with 